Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a deployment profile for Windows 10 Autopilot. Now, in separate videos, I've gone over the full feature set of Windows 10 Autopilot and covered a full demo, uh, which I'll link below here. But in this video, we're solely going to focus on the profile itself. So I'm in the Endpoint Manager here, which used to be called the Device Management Admin Center, um, but recently changed from Ignite back in November. Uh, but I got there from the 365 Admin Center, and I came down to the Endpoint Management section here, which pulled up this particular view. And in here, I'm going to go under the Windows section, and I'm going to go under Windows Enrollment. So obviously there's some prerequisites here that I've shown in other videos. Again, this is fully just going to focus on the uh, deployment profile itself. So the deployment profile defines the out-of-box experience for the end user or UBI. And this is where you can define things like showing them privacy settings or saying if it's going to be hybrid joined to a local domain or something of that nature. So uh, what I can do here is click on create new profile and you can name this whatever you want. WA test is a good one. You can name, give it a description. You can create multiple profiles in case you have different scopes of users of which you want to define a certain out of box experience. Or if there's a group of users that you solely want to be in the cloud and not hybrid join uh, to your particular local domain for a customer. This particular setting here is important because, um, one, uh, if you enroll a device into Intune, as in you go to the settings of a computer and say join worker school account, and you put in those settings and you have auto enrollment turned on with an Intune license, um, and you assign this profile to them, it's going to auto convert it to the autopilot service. So that way, next time you try to reset due to change management within the company, it will go through the out-of-box experience with which you're defining here. And then you can have all of your you know, policies and apps and everything like that configured. So usually I recommend saying yes to this and clicking on next. So these settings here, uh, deployment mode, you have user-driven or self-deploying. And you, Microsoft gives you this description here if you hover over the icon there. Um, but in most cases, 99%, I would say you're going to use user-driven, uh, where they're going to put in their credentials, either one to join the, the device for the first time, if it's straight out of the box, or um, if this is an autopilot reset or something like that, where they are still authenticating uh, to get in their certain applications or policies that you've assigned to that particular user. Self-deploying is really so for, or more so for kiosk devices, things of that nature. Next, Azure AD as AD joined or hybrid. With hybrid, I've created a video for this that I can link below as well. Um, but basically, you know, you're defining whether or not you want to push this device down uh, to a local domain or not when it's being enrolled. So think of this like in, you're ordering new devices from an OEM provider that supports Windows Autopilot. You get that device, you hand it to the end user, they boot it up, they sign in with their Active Directory credentials, and if you configure the other necessary settings, that device will then push down to your local domain and it will receive the GPOs or anything like that that you've set up. Um, so I consider this to be pretty powerful while it doesn't really make a ton of sense to move away from local Active Directory at this time from, for most, most customers in the SMB space. So here, I'm going to leave this actually as your AD joined. And then these other settings, um, you can configure how you see fit. Most of them you're going to hide simply because uh, you want this to be light touch for the end user. User account type, you can define administrator or standard. In most cases, that's going to be standard. The big one here, though, I want to highlight is the uh, white glove UBI. So I consider this pretty important for the MSP or uh, important consideration. So this allows you to go ahead and boot a device up, press the Windows key five times while it's booting up, and basically uh, come into their desktop and uh, do any administrative tasks prematurely here. So two common scenarios I see for this, one of which is, okay, I want to boot up this device and I want to make sure everything's installed correctly and I want to configure some additional settings. 
The other of which is the customer's environment has pretty low bandwidth and you want to go ahead and have all the applications install prematurely at your own site where the bandwidth is a lot, uh, lot more and have that device ready to go for the end user with everything installed uh, before you give them that device in particular. Uh, language region, you can say operating system default or you can define it here. It'll configure the keyboard if this is set. And then the device name template, um, this is really something where you could set a unique name for your devices. And this is you to use the serial macro or the RAN macro if you really want uh, that to come uh, through. Most cases, if you're just doing a straight Azure AD join deployment, you can set this up. I would recommend it just for organization. Um, but if you're doing a hybrid join to a local domain, it's going to capture the naming convention that you have in the local environment with the settings that you configure. So you're not really going to need that. Last one here is just the scope. So we're defining who it's going to be applied to. You could say all devices, and that's pretty easy and straightforward. Um, so any devices that are registered that go through and get registered into the autopilot service uh, will automatically capture this profile. Um, and those are the ones that are either one um, joined to the autopilot service via an OEM provider when you buy the, the computers themselves, or the existing devices have been joined uh, to Intune already previously, or you've uploaded them via hardware IDs that you've garnered, and that's another video I've created, and um, you can upload them and, and apply it so that they automatically capture this profile. And then when you do a reset, it'll capture the new profile and push down the settings. So I'm going to select all devices here and select next. And the last one here is just a summary of everything that we just configured. So that's everything that I show, want to show you guys here. Um, feel free to comment with any questions or comments below.